Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Radio Show on wearehotline.net. And the show is about conversations that matter, transforming lives one story at a time. And we invite people from all walks of life to come and share their heart stories, some of the great achievements that they're making because it just feels good and it's doing the right thing for so many people. On the line right now is another woman with a transformational story. She is a Canadian author of children's books. And uh, she, after a long and fruitful academic career as a university professor, uh, where she taught and studied entrepreneurship, she was led by her love for literature and kids to the quest of writing for children. Please welcome on the show Dr. Sigal Haber. How are you doing today, Dr. Sigal? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me in in this uh, platform. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, no, my pleasure, and thank you for making the time to chat with us. And I, I appreciate uh, what you do so much because uh, I have a real heart for children. I'm a, I'm a child at heart, and I love children's literature. Yeah. And I have, I'm a big collector of children's books. Yeah. And my actual, my former life, I was an early childhood education professor at Sheridan College. So uh, it w- I was the one who taught a course on how to uh, story tell and how to pick the, pick the right children's book. Uh, so I, I looked at the books that you have, and I would definitely say these are um, great, ch- great choices to uh, ignite imagination, creativity, and, and uh, helping children foster their vocabulary. So let's talk about um, your background leading up to what you're doing today as as an amazing author. Wow. Um, Thank you. Um, Well, I'm a former university professor. I um, used to teach uh, uh, and studied entrepreneurship and business management. Um, My research mainly focused on uh, entrepreneurial process, how entrepreneurship is created, by the entrepreneur, by how, how people take initiative. And my focus was mainly on the tourism industry, but I also um, generalized it to other, uh, other service industries and also in high-tech, high-tech in- industries. And, of course, my, my studies were published in uh, leading academic journals and um, I was um, I was a writer in the academic world. Um, furthermore, what I did, um, I also was a scientific advisor of unique uh, educational mm. programs in entrepreneurship and management for high school. Yes. Yes. And I worked with youth in on doing business programs, and also wrote business plans, marketing plans. Um, marketing research, and I had tons, tons of hours of community volunteering and mm-hmm. as the PTA, head of the PTA and my children's uh, school, fundraising, uh, initiating and managing community events, working with uh, gifted musicians and so forth. So it seems that I've been very, very busy. <laughs> Sounds and, like it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Been, what an amazing career you've had. Thank you. And um, at a certain point, I said to myself, okay, I've been writing um, for uh, the academic world, in the academic world, and it's a totally different writing. It's linear. It's uh, um, Its objective is to inform rather than entertain. It's different, and I, I, went, I got to this point in my life when I felt, where I felt that I needed some change, and I wanted yes. to express probably uh, different uh, aspects of my uh, personality, probably personality, mm-hmm. life experience, and bring it to, 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 um, to other audiences. Uh, yes. In addition to that... Um, there was I had this dream all along my life when I was researching and teaching entrepreneurship to introduce this subject to young children. And, you know, most of the studies says that, uh, well, it's 
actually it's a well-known notion now that uh, um, uh, being an entrepreneur or uh, taking initiative, it's not, a, it's not an inborn trait. It's something that you can learn and acquire in your, uh, through your environment, in your environment, in the community you, you, uh, you live in, and, um, and um, by role models, by um, uh, books, by, um, by learning skills in school. And this kind of mindset should be uh, instilled in children as early as possible because we know, mm-hmm. we all know that uh, entrepreneurship is something that can be very, help in advancement of the economy. So right. um, I said to myself, that's a great thing to do, and there's kind of a gap. No one dealt with this. No one said to children, hey, you can take initiative, you can be a hero, you can be a leader and create new mm-hmm. things. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be, it could be small things, small initiative, a little f- fundraising, a little of uh, um, something to help in the community. And I wanted to educate them, and I wanted to bring this message to, uh, to children uh, through their uh, parents, through their uh, educators. And that's why I wrote, Chuck the rooster loses his voice. <laughs> My story, yeah, and uh, it's a it's a it's a great story. And uh, actually, I I um, um, when I started to write it, I understood that I have to think outside the box, like most people who who uh, try to to innovate. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I had to uh, leave this, I would say, I would call them square words like models, matrix, all these academic world, w- words, um, um, concepts, and, yes. and leave them apart and start like a blank new page and... Um, don't be, uh, won't be uh, um, um, intimidated or uh, uh, stop myself uh, by saying things like uh, there is no point in writing a picture book text that is no that is longer than a couple of hundred words or uh, mm-hmm. this concept is this message is too old or too young or too short or to some audiences. No. What I decided is just to take everything from the heart and let it let it flow. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, it was a great experience. It was a great experience with a lot of challenges. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm sure there are. Yes, yes. Um, first of all, uh, you know, if I can speak about some of the challenges, um, yes. um, first of all, me as an adult writing for children. I mean, I had to think like a child or uh, I had to uh, bring the message. And how can I bring the message in a way that children will understand? And, you know, there's uh, someone said once that children's books are more of the feeling between the adult world and the children's world. So we're, there is something in between. I have my world as a, an adult within my experience and the message that I want to bring. And there's mm-hmm. the child's world with his own uh, imagination, the way he thinks about things and how he perceives um, perceive the um, the the world around him. Right. So uh, it was kind of a challenge, and I uh, realized that my writing reflects so much more than the thought of the plot, and it expresses in a way my experiences uh, as a reader throughout my life. 
And um, you know what? Even as a mother mm-hmm. with, with three kids <laughs> who read like countless books to her, right. to her kids, and yes. there are still kids There are, there are still uh, stories that we are memorizing until now, you know, <laughs> because we, we read them so much, and I felt that books are so um, um, are a great platform for me as a mother mm-hmm. to, uh, to uh, bring message to my children. So yeah. I wanted to be in this place, and um, what Another thing that happened to me during this writing process is that um, I understood that once in a while I had to revisit the reader as I was as a child, you know, and my mindset mm-hmm. at the time. And it was an, a very interesting process for me, internal process. Um, okay. Yeah, and... And um, with this baggage, if I may say, I, uh, I came to writing for children. So I wanted to introduce the concept of entrepreneurship to young children. So I right. took the really basic uh, concept of entrepreneurship to young children, uh, the, sorry, the, the basic linear uh, uh, entrepreneurial process, and started to dress it. And started to dress it in a, in a way that would be uh, accessible for children right so first of all, I decided, okay, who would be the entrepreneur? who will be the hero? Would it be Chuck the rooster who lost mm-hmm. his voice, or there will be another uh, another animal uh, that would see this opportunity that the rooster lost his voice. Uh, what would be his motive? Would it be something internal? Would it be something external? Right. Uh, where uh, he will be acting? So obviously I noticed that uh, um, farm and animals are working extremely great with the children mm-hmm. in children's world and uh, That, that's a great way to uh, you know to reach their imagination and develop it Absolutely. so everything yeah. is uh, happening in an animal farm mm-hmm. and I thought to myself okay how the process will look like and uh, would it be uh, turbulent as much mm-hmm. as similar to life to the real life or would yes. it be smooth easy no mm-hmm. No problem, things will go no easily and nice. And then I had to choose the language. Which mm-hmm. language would it be? Um, and I added rhymes. And mm-hmm. actually, it's a, it's, it's a rhyming story. I'd like to think of it as a kind of a poem, a long mm-hmm. poem. And um, it's full of humor because it's fun. Yeah. I wanted it to be fun, as, as fun as right. fun as possible. And um, also I added some uh, characteristics to the, to the, uh, to the animals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So all together brought really amusing and fun to read story. That this is not a story that you read once and that's it. You mm-hmm. can get back to it and reread it and reread it and find... Um, More and more layers of uh, of the story, and it's a picture book it's not that long it's mm-hmm. it's really fun to read okay and and the and the characters that you created are relatable, so that's why you know the children gravitate to what the stories are so what is the age range for the books what what age do you think is geared for the the books that you have available uh Chuck the rooster. I would say that it fits ages five and up. I can mm-hmm. tell you that if I had this book with my kids, I would read them read it for them like in awesome. three and up because it's a yeah. great book to read aloud and actually, this is one of the the most uh, 
repeated review that I get, it's a great book to read aloud because of the rhyming, because of the... the repetition, yeah. Yes, because of the repetition. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, once the, you have this tempo, this rhymes, that yeah. the, the kids get it uh, as a song in their mind. And it's yeah, really and fun. they anticipate the rhythm, right? When, exactly. When the book is, they 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 memorize certain lines and be surprised what they what they pick up. So I yeah. I love I love how you set that up. Now, how how can people connect with you to purchase the book? Where can they go? The book was published. I self published the book. This is one of the decisions that I took. I self published the book on Amazon. It's also on mm. Smashwords. Okay. Uh, so people can read it, uh, have it uh, both as a uh, paperback or um, can have it as an e-book through Kindles, through Smashwords, yeah. and they can read it on Kobo. And they can uh, find it on Barnes & Noble. They can mm-hmm. find it, uh, if you are in Canada, you can find it in Indigo. You can ask to... Uh, and order it in, for your library, for the community library, uh, awesome. wherever you are. And, um, and you can find me uh, on Twitter. Uh, first Fantastic. of all, the, 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 my Amazon page, you, you can leave, write, uh, read the book, order it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, I'll be happy to hear what people think about it. Uh, mm-hmm. and leave a review. And um, with me, if you want to connect with me further, I'm on Twitter. You can tweet. I'm Sigal Haber on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook. And I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, you can find me all over <laughs> the, social, the social media. Social I would media. love to yeah, hear yeah. what you're thinking about the book. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and we're going to do that. And uh, people who uh, just tuned in to the show, uh, listening to Dr. Sigal Haber, the author of uh, a number of um, wonderful uh, children's books, um, she is um, available uh, to you know, chat with you. And, and please, go out and purchase a book and uh, share this with your children. Uh, they're going to love the colors, they're going to love the characters, and they're going to love the, the rhyming sequence of words. Uh, we're also looking forward to having uh, Dr. Sigal on the Nikki Clark Show uh, live taping. And uh, we hope you have some of the books available for us to um, bring home to our families, Dr. Sigal, uh, when, they, when the time comes, September 7th. So it's, it's uh, wonderful having you on the show. We've learned a great deal. And uh, we really appreciate the craft that you've uh, mastered over the years to uh, put these books together. Uh, I know it's not an easy feat, uh, but I know it's a labor of love. And uh, uh, thank you for what you've done. So you've been listening to the Nikki Clark Radio Show with Dr. Uh, Sigal Haber. Uh, Dr. Sigal, thank you for your time. Thank you for your work. And I look forward to meeting you very soon. Thank you. Thank you for having this for letting me uh, have this great, great opportunity to speak with you and with your great audience. And um, I'm looking forward to hear uh, from all of you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. The show is about transforming lives one story at a time. Thank you. Bye-bye now.